This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. It's been a few weeks now since I've wanted to put a video together going over what I'm talking about here, which is the EV readiness of the province of Ontario, and really the lack thereof readiness for it. You know, it's been, what, three months now since I've been back on the press circuit, meaning I get press cars like this 2023 Ford F-150 Lightning. And I've had a couple electric cars so far and a couple plug-in hybrids. And I'm going to have more electric cars and more plug-in hybrids even before the end of this year. And there are some things I have noticed very quickly since doing that. <laughs> because we lived in Quebec for about five years where we were doing test drive and it was great. There's so many electric chargers out there. Everything was fantastic. Plus I had a charger at home, which made everything even better. But there's been a lot of things that I've noticed since moving to Ontario and since doing things here. And I wanna talk about a couple of the things that I've come across and sort of my frustration and hopefully some ways that the province can improve things because you know, whether we want to admit it or like it, the future is going to be zero emissions. And whether it's gonna be battery electric vehicles like this or hydrogen power or whatever it may be, the future is coming and we need to be prepared for it. Especially if Ontario wants to become an EV battery manufacturing hub, you gotta have the cars there. People wanna buy them. You need to have the infrastructure for it. There's a couple things I want to go over. First thing I want to talk about is just how ridiculous the installation costs now are for electric vehicles. Now, I know I'm in a slightly unique position. Being a journalist, we have our EV Duty smart home charger that we got sent to us by EV Duty. That's why every single electric and plug-in hybrid video you see has a opening credit thanking them for that. We, we got the charger from them. And then even the installation was covered because the company that we used out in Quebec, Connexion Electrique, they offered to do it for free if we put a sign up in the studio and advertise them every time we did a video, which we did. And it worked out because that was really only going to be a few hundred bucks, right? For them, it wasn't too bad to get some exposure. So fast forward here to Ontario, the cheapest price I've gotten for an installation job which isn't a whole lot different from what we had in Quebec. Yeah, there's a little bit more distance than you are installing it outside, but you know, vastly, it's about the same, $1,500, and that's the cheapest. Most expensive was about $3,500. That requires an entirely new panel because one electrician says that 100 amps is good enough. Another one says that we need 200 amps. Now, I believe probably 200 is the way to go. That's what we had in Quebec, but still, and then right in the middle was another quote for about $2,400. And again, that would include a charger. But the charger is what, like a thousand bucks? So it's expensive. Things have gone up. And I think a lot of it is due to the fact that a lot of manufacturers are offering to cover up to a certain amount for the installation. So then you know, maybe, not all, but maybe electricians have decided to capitalize on that. But maybe costs have really just gone up that much. So most people, if you're going to buy a vehicle like this F-150, chances are you'll get a credit to be able to have something installed at home. So again, I'm not necessarily the typical use case for it, but if you don't qualify for that, you're on your own, right? And they can be very expensive. I know some people have had to do a lot of rewiring just to get their house set up for EVs. And plus, if you live in an apartment or a condo or something, you don't really have control over that. So there, there's some definite huge roadblocks when it comes to getting infrastructure set up. And, you know, again, now that I've had a chance to sort of experience that myself, I can talk about it. But the big thing for me has been the charging infrastructure here in Ontario. It is frustrating to say the least. Now, I had thought to come into this video talking about how Quebec has vastly more chargers than Ontario. However, according to the federal government, it's not necessarily the case. In Quebec, according to the Quebec government, they have about 9,200 electric charging stations and about 1,400 of those are DC fast charges. However, according to the federal government, numbers aren't quite the same. According to them, the government says that there are about 3,869 charging stations. Station, an area that you can go that has numerous outlets because they say there's about 8,000 actual connectors in the province. And then when we compare it to Ontario, 
we have 3,047. So Quebec has eh, roughly 800 more locations to be able to charge but they are a smaller province. There are slightly less people that live in Quebec, although there are way more electric vehicles. So based on those numbers, you'd think everything was fine. But the big difference, other than the fact that I feel there really aren't as many chargers, is how you access them. For example, in Quebec, I only used one app. I had one app that I put all my electric charging money on with a physical card, as well as using the app itself. And I could use any single charger in the province. Doesn't matter what brand it was, they all were friendly with each other. They would all interact with one another. So then that way, you just download one app, you put all your eggs into that basket, and you're good to go. But here in Ontario, everything is its own little island of misery. And there are so many different things you have to download. That's the big problem. And then, you know, a lot of them just don't work. So for example, I used three different charging networks on my drive home with this vehicle. I used Ivy, which many consider to be the worst charging network here in Canada. And yeah, I would agree it was pretty terrible. Uh, I was able to plug this vehicle in. It said that the charging station was good for 100 kilowatts, which is pretty good. This F-150 will do 150, so you know, about 66% capacity. And it was actually charging at 132 kilowatts. Awesome bonus until it didn't. After six minutes exactly, it dropped down to 32 kilowatts. So I stopped the charge, started it again, and again, after exactly six minutes, it started to slow my charge and it throttled it. Now, if you were to park at that particular location, go into the mall for half an hour, you would assume that your car is gonna be fully charged up when you get there, only to come back and find out not only did it not charge at the 100 kilowatts it had advertised, but they were charging you based on the time you were there and not the amount of energy you were using, so you got ripped off. The next one I used was a Flow Charger. That one worked pretty well. I used the Flow app, everything was fine. I was getting you know about 47 kilowatts on the 50 kilowatt charger. I didn't have any issues there. I can use both my app and my physical card. I really never had any problems with Flow. And then the final one I used was Shell. Shell has some charging stations at their gas stations. There's one up in London, Ontario. It's advertised as 150 kilowatt, which is nice. When I got there, it said it was 180 even better so i figured great i'm going to plug in my f-150 they say that you should get this thing charged up from about 10 15 percent to 80 in 41 minutes so i wasn't expecting to be there forever i only got 73 kilowatts <laughs> is it the car is it the charger who knows but then if i wanted to use petro canada i have to use their app if i wanted to use ev duty they've got their app if i wanted to use any plethora of other charging stations out there you pretty much have to use their app in order to access it because some of them just don't work flow kind of partnered with shell or at least they have access to that network wouldn't work at all couldn't use my flow app i had to download the shell app add money to it and then get it to work and then even that was painfully difficult to get going. Same thing with Ivy, just doesn't work at all. So I'm not sure if it was the province of Quebec that mandated every single EV charging network had to talk to one another and allow easy access, but if that's the case, that's the big ticket difference. And I think that's really where Ontario needs to go because if you buy an electric car and then you have to install eight different apps just to be able to charge your stuff, it's just not user friendly. There has to be a better way, and there is. Quebec is doing it. So that is really my biggest complaint. Yeah, there could be more stations. They could be better situated. People could stop parking their non-electric vehicles in the stations. I found that here in St. Thomas, we're a population of about 43,000 people. We have one DC fast charging station, and nine times out of 10, there's an ICE vehicle parked there. And it's not because it's in a shopping mall and that's just where people want to park and they don't care. No, it's a car dealership and they don't seem to really care. And then none of the other car dealerships have public charging stations. As of this time, we have four OEMs here in St. Thomas. Only one has charging stations. So it is difficult in a small city like this. And you know, I've noticed a lot of people coming from out of town using that DC fast charger only to find <laughs> almost every time that somebody's parked there that when they shouldn't be. So there are a lot of issues. Ontario has a, a real 
decision to make. They really do need to get serious about it if they want to be an EV battery manufacturer. They are going to have to make some changes. And I really do think that the easiest thing to do is do what Quebec has done. Make it so that all of these different charging networks have to use the same interface for customers so that everybody can just share their information and that way you only have to have one app that way you can just download once and you're good to go and just makes life so much easier because that will help with adoption that is one of the biggest issues as far as i'm concerned when i talk to people about electric vehicles that's one of their major complaints as well so i think that would help to solve those issues because right now it's just not working. I'm I'm just not enjoying it. And that's the problem. When I was in Quebec, I loved an electric vehicle during the week because it meant I would spend almost nothing to drive around the province. But now I am spending a lot of money, mostly because I don't have a charger at home yet, but mostly because the chargers here are slow and they cost a lot of money. There are two 150 kilowatt plus charging stations within like a hundred kilometer radius of here. One of them is that Shell station, which didn't work, so I can't use that. Like, you know, there, there needs to be more done. Whether it's incentives, whether it's grants, things like that, we do need more. Because it's, it's laughably bad at how just far behind this province really is for the amount of people that they want using these stations. And switching over to Tesla's solution isn't going to make things better there aren't a lot of those either i know it on in the, the us i have to imagine that's why all the manufacturers have switched over to using the north american charging standard probably because tesla has a pretty big network in the us not so much here the the public access stations i think are much more accommodating there's more of them out here on ontario you're going to have a better chance finding one of those than you would a tesla one so don't get me started with that i think it was a bad decision for all the manufacturers to jump on board with that but I just wanted to finally put a little video together talking about the province and hopefully some change will come because right now it's just unbearable. But let me know what you think. Do you have an electric vehicle? First of all, do you live here in Ontario? Because these problems really are for this province, but maybe you've traveled through Ontario. You've traveled somewhere else. Maybe you live somewhere else and you have some concerns or questions or your own thoughts as well. Because you know, the whole idea is, you know, we can't all just do this on our own. We have to take inspiration from places that have been successful so maybe you've got a better idea on how things should work let me know in the comments below we always try to get back to everybody as often as we can so type away thumbs up the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and as always we appreciate you watching this until next time take care